she cheats, and kicks me out for a new man? I'll make them lose their sanity. Literally. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. I create them with fleeky visuals, dipped in artificial love. We start off with a heartbreaking story, in which a married wife and a family friend have a secret affair. When they get caught, they both receive a self-destruct button. But will they press it? In this story, the minimum effort for maximum destruction ratio, is to be considered outstanding. Followed by a story, about a soldier fulfilling his duty, while his girlfriend meets a typical Jody and cheats on him. He was hurt, tired, and even ugly cried. But he knew he couldn't stop now. He could only stop after being done, done with socially nuking her life. Lastly, a girlfriend that cheats on her boyfriend, and tells him to grab his stuff and get out of her house, because she found a new one. Seriously. But her boyfriend makes sure to leave something behind. Which could be funny to some, but when you unknowingly suffer under it, it forces you to question your own sanity. Making this man either a genius, or plain evil. After you subscribe for new uploads, make sure to smite vengeance on the like button and chuckle uncontrollably, while rubbing your hands together like the true villain you are. Let's dive in. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts, might be disturbing to cheaters. Justin and Sarah have been like family to my wife and I for several years, practically ever since we moved in across the street from them. The four of us were extremely tight. Our kids are the same age as theirs and are all good friends. You could consider us like one big family unit. We did dinner together a few times a week. We went on vacations together. I truly saw Justin as a brother, and my wife and Sarah were very close too. Five months ago, I was completely blindsided by the discovery of an affair between my wife and Justin. My wife had left her email open on our computer, and I saw an email from her to her longtime therapist saying that Justin would be joining her at an upcoming session again. Uh, what the fuck? My mind started racing, why in the world would Justin be going to her therapy sessions without my knowledge? I did a search and found some other emails to and from the therapist, proving that Justin had been going to sessions together with her for about six weeks. I checked our mobile phone account and discovered that, since late summer, they had been exchanging hundreds of texts every day, peaking at nearly 500 a day by the holidays. Speaking of the holidays, my wife and I hosted both of our families for both Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner, and Justin and Sarah joined us either for dinner or after dinner on both holidays. Text records show that the entire time that they were at our house celebrating with our families, my wife and Justin were texting each other across the room. They were doing that pretty much every time the four of us hung out, for months. And, you know, all day every day just in general. But what bothers me the most, is that they were doing it with Sarah and I right there. I confronted my wife with the evidence and she admitted that yes, she and Justin had fallen in love. It just happened. I don't know how, but I love him and I just don't feel anything for you anymore. I'm so sorry. They had gone on a school district trip together, something had happened in her hotel room, and things had moved quickly from there. She explained, as I lay face down on the couch, unable to look at her, that they had already made plans to move out and divorce me and Sarah, and while they didn't plan to move in together immediately because of the kids, they'd probably do so eventually. So thoughtful of them. The meetings with the therapist were supposedly mostly for the purpose of finding a way to break this to me and Sarah as gently as possible, because they were so very concerned for our well-being. Sarah and I are fairly certain that they weren't planning on telling us about the affair at all, and were simply going to discover their feelings for one another several months down the line, after they'd come up with some other reason to divorce the two of us. My wife moved out two months ago. I was, and still am, utterly destroyed. I cry every day. I cried writing the first few paragraphs of this story just now. I worry non-stop about the impact on our kids. But I'm also not exactly a shrinking violet, when I feel that I've been wronged. And in this case I was, objectively, very very wronged. So, a couple of years ago, Justin ran for a board of education seat as a pretty extreme underdog. I helped him with his campaign materials and debate prep, and my wife, a well-known school district employee, this becomes important later, got the word out as best she could. Much to our surprise, he actually won in a squeaker, by just a few dozen votes. Being on the board became the center of Justin's world. He joined every committee that he could. This turned into the foundation of his affair with my wife, as they were constantly going to school events and meetings together on evenings and weekends. 
once I discovered the affair, my thoughts turned pretty quickly to revenge, and it occurred to me. An extramarital affair between a member of the Board of Education and an employee of the school district was at least bad politics and possibly violated district policy. Making things far worse for them, was that my wife was in the running for an open administrative position, and everyone knew that she was more or less guaranteed the job and then the major pay raise that came with it. She had just finished her master's degree in school administration, at the urging of her principal and the superintendent, so that she could be promoted to this specific position. I had plenty of evidence of the affair, texts from both of them admitting to it, text records showing that they were texting hundreds of times a day, emails to and from the therapist, and even more. I considered simply emailing all of the evidence to the board and the superintendent, but felt like I, as the grieving, betrayed spouse, might not be seen as a credible source. So instead, I invented a fictitious furious friend who was planning on showing up to the next board meeting and publicly shaming the two of them for their affair. I told my wife that I'd tried to talk this person down but couldn't guarantee that they wouldn't show up and humiliate them publicly. As I expected, this led Justin to conclude that the only option was for him to preemptively admit the affair to the board. The superintendent subsequently recommended that Justin resign, which he did. Sarah said that he was utterly humiliated and crushed, and barely got out of bed for a few days afterward. Once word of the affair and Justin's resignation started getting around, the superintendent, a longtime friend of both my wife and Justin, contacted my wife and tearfully informed her that it was no longer politically appropriate for her to be promoted to an administrative position within the district. The position that had been lined up for her was later filled by an outside candidate. This sent waves of confusion and rumor throughout the district, as it was pretty well known that my wife was getting the job. The day after she was informed that she wasn't getting the promotion, my wife and I, despite our crumbling marriage, took our son out to breakfast together on his birthday and a parent stopped by our table to congratulate her on her new role. She said thanks, then excused herself to go cry in the bathroom for a while. I let the dust settle for a couple of weeks, and then, right before my wife moved out, let them in on my little secret, there never was a furious friend threatening to expose them in the first place. Just me. Word of all of this has gotten around our fairly small town, which Justin grew up in and my wife has worked in for nearly 20 years. My wife refuses to talk to me about how things are at work now, but I've heard from some people I know in the district, that her formerly spotless reputation has taken a major hit. Justin, formerly a gregarious social presence in our neighborhood and at events and pubs in town, has completely gone underground and barely emerges to mow his lawn. He's moving out soon, to a shitty little townhouse which is all he can afford due to all the child support he's going to have to pay his wife. My wife and Justin claim that they plan on trying to make things work together, despite all the public humiliation. I wish them lots of luck with that. I'm sure it will be a lot of fun to show their faces together in town. The following are some questions I got, and I'll respond to them. Are you and Sarah a thing now? You should totally be a thing, that would be awesome. No. We're friends. We've been incredibly important to each other since this all started and have certainly gotten a lot closer but not in the way everyone's thinking. This would all be so much harder to deal with if I didn't have her to lean on, and she says she feels the same way about me, we're going through basically the exact same situation with the same players, after all. Justin hasn't moved out yet, once he does, we plan to go back to getting the kids together more often like they used to, it'll never be the same of course. She already does come over with the kids from time to time, but it's just tough with Justin's constant presence across the street. Didn't your revenge hurt both sets of kids? Not really. Justin has a day job, the Board of Education was his hobby and his passion but this didn't affect his income at all. And my wife has been assured that if she wants to pursue an administrative position with another district, she'll have glowing letters of recommendation from her superintendent and principal. It'll mean giving up a lot of work relationships in the process, but given the hit her reputation has taken, I'm guessing she makes the jump sooner rather than later. In the meantime, not moving to an administrative job means that she still has summers off with the kids. Why do you call her your wife, instead of your former wife? We're working out way through divorce mediation, but it isn't final yet. We'll be soon. Why didn't you notice all of the texting your wife was doing? Well, I did. It was really starting to piss me off. It was excessive. She has a big social circle and does tend to text a lot anyway, but it was really getting over the top, to the point where she was completely ignoring me and the kids. At one point in November I asked her to agree to a no phones at the dinner table rule, which she agreed to reluctantly, but then would pout through dinner, 
and eventually she just started using her phone during dinner again. All that said, I was blind. Not only was the texting getting weird, but her relationship with Justin was starting to make me uncomfortable. Sarah noticed it too and agreed. We confronted them a couple of times about it directly and they both swore up and down that it was just school stuff that they were talking about, there was nothing else going on. And for whatever reason, we believe them, probably because the mind tends to refuse to see things that it doesn't want to see. In late May 2016, I asked my crush of three years, Kate, out on a coffee date. Three dates later, we made things official. For the next seven months, our relationship felt too good to be true. We clicked on so many interests, so we hardly ever disagreed on anything. We were very open with each other, which led to incredible sexy time. We both had good jobs so we had money to spoil one another, and our families were both enthusiastic about our relationship. In January 2017, I was accepted into my country's armed forces reserve program as a combat engineer. I underwent basic training from February to late April, and was up until then the hardest thing I had ever done. There were several times I thought I wouldn't graduate, and the only thing that kept me going was Kate's words of encouragement over texts and calls. She was there when I received my BTC certificate, and never let me forget how proud she was of me. As part of my job in the reserves, I would have to go away in the summer for advanced training, between early June to late August. Kate fully supported me going 400 kilometers away to the training center and spending almost our entire summer break on work, to further my military career. The summer was brutal on me, I was a social outcast from every clique that formed on our course, and was the butt of several jokes. My self-esteem plummeted through the floor, but Kate's belief in me was what made me prevail. I passed as fifth best on course, and I owed it all to her. But things between us started to sour after returning home. According to her, I wasn't as spontaneous and outgoing as before I went away. I was dismissive, took small jabs and jokes as personal insults, and would rather stay in, watch movies, and have sex instead of going out. Unbeknownst to both of us, I had developed some nasty social anxiety due to the events of the summer, and it started affecting our relationship. Nearing our two-year anniversary in 2018, we got into a heated argument over a small misunderstanding, and subsequently broke up. I was incredibly distraught, before she texted me three days later and said she wanted to try and fix things. I didn't see her for three weeks, but we kept in touch every day, slowly mending things. When we officially got back together, nothing felt the same. Every time I talked with her, it was if I was walking on eggshells, and it only worsened my anxiety, which in turn hurt our already damaged relationship. Then things finally came to a head at the end of July. While in school, Kate had met a dude named John. She saw in John what she used to see in me, and they quickly became very close friends. He consoled her through our breakup and every little time I messed up afterwards. For the record, I knew of John, but never thought Kate would ever do anything with him. One night after work, we had planned for me to stay the night at Kate's place. I arrived to see the two of them chilling on the living room couch. Kate said that John had dropped by for a spontaneous visit, and he was just leaving. After John left, she became cold and distant. I slowly accepted that our relationship was dead, and asked her how things were between us. She echoed my thoughts, and we agreed to break up the next day. She said I could stay the night one last time, seeing how it was late and she was still caring towards me. From there on until she fell asleep, Kate became uncharacteristically glued to and protective of her phone. In the past, she wouldn't care if I had glanced over to catch her and her friends texting about whatever, but now she did her best to hide the screen from me. I asked her about it, and she said it was private stuff, which only raised more questions. After she fell asleep, curiosity got the better of me, I unlocked her phone, I knew her passcode, and found hundreds of messages between her and John. Messages about how she was now single, how exciting it was that they could now be a couple in public, and laughing at me about every little thing I did. I quietly sobbed as I read through each hurtful text. My crying wasn't as quiet as I thought. Kate stirred, and once she realized what I was doing, she threw a fit. I couldn't find the anger or words to combat her, so I just grabbed my stuff and left, with Kate shouting and yelling at me the whole time. It was late in the morning when I got home, I just broke down and ugly cried all night. I called in sick for work the next day, and spent it sulking in my bed. The day after, I got several angry texts from Kate's friends and family. In a bid to save her image and denounce anything I might say about her, she told anyone she knew that I had forced myself upon her that night, in one last attempt to, get some before we broke up, and left after the deed was done. Though what I had done was scarring, 
She refused to press charges because she didn't want to make a circus of her life in court, and was the bigger person by doing so. I spent the next few months in total fear, that her allegation would have me discharged from the army, with my image forever tarnished, for something I didn't even do. Luckily, no such thing ever happened. Five months afterwards, Kate messaged me. After pleasantries, she basically apologized for the whole thing, and actually admitted to faking it, though she would never publicly admit it to save her own reputation. Funny how this works in her brain, because my image could be damned and she couldn't care less? This angered me, but I kept cool. I screenshot the text and continued talking with her. Over the next three months, she entered into a cycle of events as follows, she would complain about her current life situation, usually about John screwing up in their relationship in one way or another. She would come to me asking for advice, while trying to lament our relationship. Telling me how I never screwed up like John did, how she wished we could go back to the way things were, blah blah blah. She would start to ignore me, because John would pull his head out of his ass, maybe because he knew she was messaging me so often. He would do some huge romantic gesture, and save their relationship, going on a smear campaign on social media about the relationship I had with her. In the process employing her friends for help, knowing in full that I would see it all, and trying to bait me into an argument. This would work, she would team up with him and try to turn the argument around and paint me as the bad guy, and then block me for about a month. After this, she would repeat this whole cycle again and again. This happened three times like clockwork, and always left me burnt out and broken. But don't feel bad for me, part of me wanted it to happen. Because each time it did, I took screenshots of every damning thing she said. I had a full SD card of everything, which I neatly compiled. I kept saving them until finally deciding, it was time. Making several picture copies of the worst of the worst text messages I caught. I bought several manila envelopes and mailed them to everyone I thought would matter. I sent it to Kate, her parents, grandparents, extended family she was super close with, best friends, work boss, co-workers, teachers, whoever I could find a mailing address for. I made sure that anyone getting the envelope would know that the texts were between me and Kate, and sent them off. Within three weeks, I got results. Some of the people who messaged me to shame and insult me before now apologized for their words. My favorite was from her own parents, who went on to say that they were deeply sorry about their daughter's behavior, how they raised her to be better than how she acted. They asked me to please not pursue any legal actions, the thought had crossed my mind, but I didn't have the money nor the mental fortitude to fight a legal battle. I told them I'd think about it, and that they'd be the first to know besides Kate if I did. Kate sent me some texts as well, with things like, how could you betray my trust like that or you ruined my life you bastard. I didn't reply, I just read every angry text that flew in with a satisfied grin and then blocked her when they stopped. I never fully found out how badly her life was affected by my revenge, but I do know that she dropped out of school and no longer has a job. I hope John was worth it though. Thank you all so much for the kind words of support. A lot of people have been worrying about my mental state, so I thought I'd relieve those worries. I've been seeing a therapist for three months now, and have made significant progress. I can't begin to explain how much I owe her for helping me regain some semblance of normalcy in my life. I was in a relationship with this girl and moved in with her. We wouldn't be seeing each other for some time, because she went on a work trip. Everything was fine and we were together when she left. But then, she messaged me. She blatantly asked me to move out, because she was planning to come home with another man. She would refer to him as her new boyfriend. Seriously? Okay, I'll move out. But it would be strange. It would be as if I was never there though. So why shouldn't I leave something there for her? Let me get into my vengeful details. I got these little noisemakers, battery-powered ones the size of a quarter. They emit sounds at just the right volume, so that you aren't sure if you really heard it. So quiet, that two people could be sitting in an average-sized room and while one can barely hear it, the other wouldn't hear a thing. They last ages, and fit perfectly in light fixtures and in wall outlets. I got a box of 20 of them for like $100 on eBay. While being cheap, it was priceless to me. I got in my creative mood and put them in all weird places in and around her house. I put one in her car and even hid some in a boat her dad got her. She grew up sailing and her family is wealthy. How I see it, I made her life richer by adding these devilish devices into her life. Now, these little bastards make a noise at complete random intervals, could be minutes, could be hours, could take a whole day off. They cycle noises like children laughing, a dying breath as they called it, a whistle, from scratching noises, 
to some other ones I can't remember, but you get the idea. It would be so unpredictable, it was near impossible for someone to just figure it out. Months go by, I get a new place, get my life back up. Now we had a few friends in common and one of them I kept up with. They were kinda sour about how she ended things but they had grown up together and kept up the friendship, loosely talking and catching up on occasion. I never really asked about her, but one day we get to talking and he's wanting to prank some friends on a camping trip, so I tell him about the noisemakers. As I'm telling him about them, he slowly starts making this face, like he's gradually losing his shit. He gets this huge grin on his face and asks me, you used these with your ex didn't you? And when I admit he starts laughing hysterically. Turns out her new boyfriend had only lasted a few months, and had left telling her that he couldn't handle whatever was going on with them, specifically about their mental states. Turns out, they had both heard things and sometimes only one would hear them, which gave the illusion that something really sinister fucked with them or was going on in their heads at different times. They couldn't figure it out and eventually he wanted out completely. Especially after having run down all the crazy stuff that could be happening to crazy people. Like from believing to being infected with some brain worms the government put in their vaccines and stuff like that. It was amazing, I hadn't expected to hear anything about it but now I rode that train for weeks. Thinking about it brought me higher joys than I ever experienced before. She moved out, told her parents she didn't want the house and to give it to her brother or sell it. Wouldn't tell them why. I always tell people who ask about her that I hold no grudge, but I don't tell them the part where I totally fucked with her so bad, while in doing so, I enter the realm that's royal AI worthy, and hit the blissful state of satisfaction, which you hit after you know you did a good job. My wife knows this story by heart, because it's her favorite one to tell. In some ways I'm not too proud of this, it was a long time ago and I was in a really dark place, the whole event just tipped me and I responded in a no fucks to give state the best I could, by just being a menace. She also did it all through a short impersonal email that just sucked ass. I'm not saying that's all an excuse, just some context. Also, the house was purged of the devices after she left. I let her brother in on it because they weren't close at all and he lived with their mom most his life. We were close because we game together and he was able to find all but two of them. He ended up using them for other pranks, for a long time. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe to receive future episodes, and tickle the like button for good karma. Do you have any experiences surrounding this topic? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.